Ah, hello, dear friend. Please come in. You've come just at the right time. I have a story for you. Now, this story will not only captivate you, but it will leave you yearning for more at the end of each chapter. It will be like nothing you have ever heard before. I personally guarantee it. Oh, and goodness me, where are my manners? Allow me to introduce myself, dear friend. I am John Cleave, historian, scribe, scholar, narrator, storyteller, if you will. <laughs> Oh, but this is not about me. No, no, no. This story follows five unique protagonists, each one coming from a different walk of life, full of love and joy, but also wrought with tragedy and loss. Yes, yes. Now, as we journey together in this story, we will get to see these protagonists develop and flourish. They will grow through pain and suffering, through laughter and blissful delight. This story is about them and the world they get to explore and learn. Yes, dear friend, this will be a story to remember. So let us begin our fantastical journey through the biosphere and start on a brand new adventure. Fragments of a Lost Home So, welcome back to D&D. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, but welcome to Campaign 2. You will be starting us off. All right. So, we begin this adventure on the last night of Carissifit. This is the last day of spring, basically. Um, you are currently making your way to the small farming village of Fimbleton, west of Mahaloth, the farming and agricultural capital of Skathen. You are here on assignment, essentially. You were given the task to come here because there is an approaching danger. So, as you kind of walk over this hill, you see Thimbleton. It's a small, quaint village. Um, there's quite a few uh, fields, very large fields of crops. You see one of them notably is a large uh, field of wheat. And at night, it's very peaceful. You can see uh, like the top part of the qu uh, crops like waving in the wind. It looks like a very beautiful like ocean kind of, of, of a sea of crops. Um, you can see there are a few uh, lanterns and fires lit uh, around these houses. Um, there is a, a large inn, um, a few different uh, stores, like a blacksmith, a general store. But you kind of get the lay of the land. It's, it's smaller in size, um, but you are here for a very specific reason. This is your destination. Some notable things, I guess, in this world. Uh, there is no moon, but there are stars. So it's a clear night out. Um, very peaceful, very beautiful. The wind uh, gently breezes. Uh, you can feel the heat of the summer days kind of coming on. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a nice night. So as you begin to make your way towards the village center, would you like to describe your character to us? Yes. She goes by Mirage. For now. Um, she is a human. 5 foot 10, age 30, 142 pounds. Very, very fair skin with faded black to greenish gear tattoos that have been developing since birth. Um, her hair 
kind of fades from like a white to a black around the tips. Um, very kind of Russian approach to people. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Um, like bobbed hair with a very sleek uh, sorcerer garb. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, with. Uh, yeah, she carries a quarter staff with a bunch of gears and other crazy, just, uh, like, steampunk clockwork going on. Hell yeah. And on her chest is this affliction that resembles a flower mm-hmm. with veins growing out like they're being rooted Hell yeah. And she has a very kind of cold, piercing gaze and expression. She's got like very bold reddish black eyeshadow, like silvery eyes that cut into your soul and a cutie mark because of flavor. <laughs> I, just, I just had a, the thought. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Ten more points. Nice. And uh Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So, Mirage, you're making your way into this small village. Through the breeze, you begin to feel a presence. It's a very familiar presence. You know this one. As you kind of look around to see where this presence, this feeling that someone's kind of near you, um, you see your guide or companion, I guess you could say, your, mm, how would we, how would you describe your relationship with this person? Like an agent? That makes sense. Yeah. It's a divine agent. Yeah. <laughs> As you, like, turn to see, you see Dion, the god of love, in a more spiritual, like, apparition. Um, he's wearing very simple clothing. Um... His hair, pink, long, kind of flowing down his back. Um, You see four large angelic wings that are, like, folded in. And he just kind of apparates out of thin air and looks to you, kind of tilts his head up, and just gives you a nice, warm smile. You begin to feel this sense of comfort and you're at ease even though you are in a place you've never been at and you kind of know that your task does involve danger so this brings you comfort as if this is a longtime family member that you are reunited with so as he looks to you he smiles and goes well welcome to Fimbu Tim darling and I just take a little drag from my golden Audrey Hepburn like <laughs> cigarette cigarette holder. Yeah. Quite a quaint little place. Oh yes. It's quite. And yet there's so much to it. Quite a peaceful night, don't you agree? <sighs> simple place with simple people wanting to live a simple life and a lot is about to happen I'd hate for that peace to be disturbed but that's what we're here to do that's what you're here to do my dear 
But do not fret. I know you'll be able to handle it. Well, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. But I, I, I trust you. And these people, they're, they're good people. And they'll help you if you need it. Well, I'll keep doing what I do best and leave the joke telling to me too. <laughs> well, all right. I'm glad you made it here safely. I'll be looking after you. Get some rest. <sighs> Thank you, Dion. Of course, my dear. I'm here to help. Um, Anything on your mind? Just reminds me of home a little. Reminds me of the swamp. Does it? I feel as if the swamp would be a bit more... mucky. Say that. I'd say that at night time, the wildlife is a little more chattery, but there's a stillness to it all. A stillness, like the calm before a storm. Interesting. <laughs> you seem to be getting a kick out of this. A little bit. Well, I am the god of love, but we do all love to have fun. <laughs> well, don't be changing your title to the god of misfit. <laughs> I'll leave that for, well, the other ones. <laughs> Might be taken already with... I've lost count. <laughs> Yes, well, there are a lot of us. That's quite all right. We all have our tasks. We are all here to do something important, just like you. Take care. You know how to reach me. He just, like, spreads his wings, and as he does, he just, like, takes a step back and just, like, disappears into, like, starlight as it goes up and kind of disappears into the night air. Okay. Well, all I could hope for is that the people give me as little resistance as possible. I just gotta do my job and leave. At least the inn is within view. Saves me the trouble. Yep. So you can see kind of how you are approaching here. Uh, this would be the inn. You would be kind of coming out from over in that region. Um, but you would definitely be able to see the inn from where you are at. Um, and easily enough make your way there and get rest for the night. Alrighty. So make my way to the inn. Um, is it busy at all? Um... Uh, not really. Um, as you enter the inn, you would see that there are a few patrons there. Um, they all look to be the farmer type. Very simple cloth clothing, uh, pretty dirtied up. Um, you can see some of them are wearing, like, sun hats or putting off to the side. Um, you can see there is an innkeeper, um, behind, like, the bar. Um, older man. Pretty old, a uh, very kind of like gnarled looking man. Like he has this gruff look to him. He has like a very like square chin, uh, short white hair that kind of goes on his forehead a little bit over the eyes. Um, think of, oh fuck, what's his name? Um, Ron, oh my God, what is his name? Fuck. He's like this stereotypical, like, old cowboy dude. He's like a big mustache, like, white hair. Oh, like Woody Harrelson? Is it not Woody Harrelson? Uh, 
fuck, I can't, I can't think of his name. But anyways, um, he just has a very gruff look to him. Um, like he's, he's seen a lot. Almost kind of like, think of like a, what, what a war veteran might look like. That's kind of what he looks like. Okay. Uh, but yeah, a uh, very big, robust, muscular looking dude. Um, but also very old. Um, uh, currently right now he seems to be cleaning up. Um, he has like a stack of dishes that he's put down and he's starting to, uh, clean, uh, but he seems to be the only person like running this place, and there's maybe two or three people inside currently. Okay. So it's not busy. It's pretty late at night too. Okay. It's it's maybe like nine o'clock at night. Okay. And just as like a little character flourish, because I have the cantrip prestid right. prestidigitation. There you go. You got I it. Just like yeah, there we go. Now that I have to read like twenty times over. Uh huh. That I just like flicker to make the material of the tobacco just turn into water vapor. Okay. As I walk in, just be mindful. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see as you walk in, everyone just kind of like looks towards you and gives you kind of like that the side eye because you are new here. Mm -hmm. If you want to go ahead and roll, I say go ahead and roll insight, just a general insight. All right, All right. first roll of the campaign. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, that's 11. Okay, 11 is enough. As you walk in and, s and the air the air changes as you walk in. Okay. At first it was very peaceful. You know that your divine agent is looking <laughs> over you. Um, but as you walk in, you immediately feel out of place. The three patrons that are in there like give you a side eye as they're like taking a sip from their tanker and they just look at you, you immediately feel like, it's not that you're not welcome here, it's just strange. Mm -hmm. To them, you are a foreign thing. Right. Like a foreign person. I guess because I also dress pretty contemporary and unusual. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like, all these people are dressed in very simple clothing. You come in wearing you, uh, quite ornate clothing compared to them. Mm -hmm. So, Yes. You are definitely out of place. You feel out of place, and the air definitely changes to one of kind of tense. There's a there's a tenseness to it. Mm -hmm. So, what would you like to do as you enter? I just make my way to the tavern keep. Mm -hmm. Just sit down. May I get a room for the night and a glass of water, please? Of course, yes. Um, he goes over and gets you like a glass of water. Um, and as he goes back to like uh, washing dishes, he looks at you and goes, Far from home? Quite, yes. <laughs> you look it. It's certainly cleaner than the swamps. <laughs> swamps? You, you've got to be joking. Your home is in the swamp. Um, I guess you could call it a home. <laughs> By the gods, what are you doing in this godforsaken place? Uh, I suppose the winds are just guiding me from to the next and I mean their shoulder I can rely on <laughs> they're an interesting character you need a room for a night then ah, since you're new here he just kind of hands you the key to a room Are and you stay sure? here for the night of course Are you sure I could... tomorrow's first light consider this a gift you would know that first light is the first of summer, basically. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of like the summer solstice, uh, but to the people in Skathen, uh, this is kind of a little celebration as the coming of, you know, longer days, hotter weather. Um, there's a little bit of a celebration for that. So um, people are a bit more upbeat and kind of happy. 
So this is just kind of a gesture of like, yeah, tomorrow's a holiday, so here, why not? Okay. You have my thanks, Tavern Keep. I will be long. Oh, please, call me Jaff. Jaff. You have my thanks, Jaff. Uh, Jaff. 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 There you go. You have a bit of an accent, but it's okay. I promise I won't intrude for too long. I'll be gone before you know it. Well, all righty then. It's not like we get many visitors, but recently we've had a few. <laughs> I appreciate the more than warm hospitality. <laughs> of course. As long as you don't cause, cause any trouble here, we are a peaceful town, and we like to keep it that way. If you say so. Well, I'm about to lock up here soon, so, um, you have a good night. You as well, Gav. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Jaff. Jaff. He just, he, he just starts grumbling as he, like, starts, like, bussing the tables and, like, taking dishes and stuff. Um, but okay. Um. I think the aloofness does work for <laughs> Yeah. That is kind of funny. They're not going to remember. I'm not going to fucking remember. Thanks, Gaff. Jeff. (laughs) Gaff. Okay, so, do you take a long rest? Is there anything else you want to do before you sleepy sleep? Uh, I think I'm good. Okay, so, you enter the small, very basic room, and... You get a long rest. Alrighty. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, well. Um, you would know that this is kind of like the first day that Yalor, the god of the sun, um, blessed Ethos with his light. Which is why it's kind of a uh, day of celebration. Okay. Um, How do you spell his name again? Y apostrophe L O R. So on this day, um, anyone who worships Yolor, this is a revelrous day. This is a day of celebration for them. Um, they kind of spend the day worshiping their god, um, kind of just dedicating the day to the sun. They spend most of the day outside. Uh, for farmers, it's a great day because usually the first light is a clear, um, beautiful day uh, where the sun shines the brightest down on ethos. It's just a great day for uh, being outside and working. Um, so farmers and religious people alike celebrate this day. So, so are in like a good mood today. Yes. And so as you approach the small farming village of Fimbleton, you would see that it is uh, mid-morning now as you enter. Um, You can see that the village is full of life. It is small, it is quaint, um, but the city, the, sorry, village center is bustling with people. Uh, You can see farmers are out selling their harvest, their crops. Um, you can see just people going about their day, just having having a good time. It's it's a general, generally a good atmosphere, a good vibe. Um, so you would be coming over a small hill and basically be being able to see all of Fimbleton. Um, off to the eastern side of it, or northeastern side, uh, you would see large fields, uh, mostly of like wheat or corn. Um, just large fields of various crops. Um, so, Ambrose, you are coming here to deliver something to someone. Would you go ahead and describe your character as you enter the town of Fimbleton? Um, he's a six foot two, uh, 
um, pale tiefling, long right, white hair, um, black ram horns, um, and color of his eyes, his eye, the white of his eyes are black, and he has like, white cat, um, cat's eyes. Um, he's wearing really nice clothes, more like a casual suit, I would put it. Mm. Casual fantasy suit. Yeah, that! <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Um, and, um, always has leather gloves on. Of some sort. So. Okay. So, you are coming to Vimbleton to deliver something. You have a purpose here. But you have a companion alongside you who is tagging along for different reasons. So, if Macau, you can describe your character as you travel along with your partner, Ambrose. Okay, so, uh, Macau is a feral tiefling uh, with very, very dark, like deep blue skin. Uh, kind of like baby pink hair, pastel, bubblegum, whatever floats your boat. Um, it's got like a little bang situation, two longer pieces in the front, it's short in the back. Um, and he will not tell anyone if he dies it or not, so don't ask. Um, uh, his horns resemble that of a ram, but have like little jutting pieces that kind of go along as it gets longer, if that makes sense. Um, he has like jewelry and decorations on them. Uh, he has a lot of piercings in his ears that are slightly longer than like a half elves, I guess. A uh, piece of jewelry connecting into one of the pieces of jewelry that is on horns. Um, and so much metal in his face. There's so much metal in his face. These bad boys, this bad boy, these bad boys with a chain. Um, yeah. And, oh, his legs also weird. <laughs> That's all I can say. He's got a weird leg. Some, <laughs> his walk is a little janky. Okay. So, you two walk into Fimbleton during first light. Again, the village center is pretty bustling. There's quite a few people. Um, so, Ambrose or Macau, what are you doing as you enter the village center? Um, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm trying to look for, uh, what's the name? Can you please pronounce it for me? <laughs> you can give it the old college try. No, thank you. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to butcher shit today. Yeah. Come on, we're right at the beginning. It's the perfect time to butcher shit. I'll butcher it every time. Because <laughs> I say it once wrong, it's forever going to be wrong. Where is it? Right here. Yadira? Oh, Yadira Bersky? Is it Yadira Bersky? Or Bersky? Yadira? Yadira, okay. Yadira. Yes, I'm looking for Yadira Bersky. I assume I have directions or like instructions to get to where I'm going. What you have written is what you know. Oh god damn, I gotta find people. <laughs> um well, you have to talk to people. I do have to talk to them. Is there a town a noticeable town hall? A notice board maybe. Yeah, <laughs> There there is a noticeable uh tavern, yes. We'll head that way. Or tavern in uh yes. That is the the largest building that you can see here. It's a two-story, pretty big, um, okay, uh, pretty big building, um, very close to this uh, village center. Also, for those of you who who did walk into Vimbleton, uh, you would notice that on the map here, uh, you would be walking in kind of from this area. Mm -hmm. um, this is the inn here. Uh, but you can see in the middle is kind of a, a small marketplace. Uh, people set up their stuff around a pretty large stone statue. Okay. Um, it appears to be of a female uh, human um, who's wearing kind of like a toga like dress. Um, the area surrounding you is very green. Uh, again, you are in the uh, Rifflands. So this is a hilly grassland type area. Um, this place in particular is very great for farming, which is why they have large fields of crops everywhere. Um, 
but yes, this is the probably the most noticeable um, building in your surrounding area. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna head that direction. I'm following. <laughs> yep. Because I have to. I have to. I'm probably gonna say he's gonna stay right next to you. Okay. Okay, so you enter the tavern. As you approach, you can see that there is a hanging sign uh, on it that it's called the Woodcutter's Folly. I am too drunk. I cannot cut this tree. <laughs> I drank too much and I chopped off my toe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's funny because you're not that far off from the actual <laughs> lore of the inn and that the name, right. which is really funny. Um, it's because I rolled that 19 on the history. Yep, That's you crazy. you know a lot somehow for some reason. Let's go. Um, this time I'm okay. so down the town, and I'm like, I know everything. I know the grains of the dirt. So you enter this tavern. Um, there's quite a few people in this in this building. There's a lot of people down here getting breakfast, um, food, or just or just hanging out in here. This is this is kind of the hangout spot of the village. Uh, think of like a, a very small town, and there's like the one place that everyone goes to to hang out. This is it right Ew. here. It's either this or this marketplace. Um, so you walk in, and this place is. Bussin, bussin. Um, there is one person who is like uh, playing a lute and providing like a very lovely, uh, upbeat atmosphere. Um, you can see there is one older, kind of gnarled, gruff looking uh, man behind the bar who is uh, serving everything. He is like a one man army, he's doing everything by himself. Uh, but he's busting his ass trying to get uh, things, but he's doing it in a very composed way. Like, Almost like he knows this like the back of his hand, so he's not worried about like taking his time to do things, but he's also so hurrying along. Um, Get it, I guess. So you enter this place. Um, you are not really noticed, if that makes sense. There are so many people in here that there no one's paying attention to you. Um, but again, it is very crowded in here, so you kind of have to push your way through if you're trying to get to a certain area. Um, but yeah, also at this time, you probably would have woken up, um, more than like you would have already made your way down into this area. All right. <sighs> what a time it's all going to go down. Are you just kind of like posting up in this area? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, what are you two doing then? I was going to try and find my way to, up to the bar and try to get that man's attention. Okay, very cool. I'm going to stand close slightly behind. Cole, you can come in uh, now. Uh, <laughs> in through. Enter into this fantasy space with us! Please, oh, enter. Oh my god, it's so warm in here. I know, it's so warm. Oh my god, it's getting hot in here. I don't understand what's going on. Because you just walked in. Damn. <laughs> damn. God damn! Damn, it's hot. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I can't see him no more. They can't see him no more. Yeah, Nobody figures out what he got. Back to bud. Damn, oh my god, I can't see him. <laughs> okay, so. Good, good. As you guys are walking up to the bar to talk with the uh, old man behind the bar, you you approach, and right next to you is this half orc. If you would like to explain how your character looks, as you see these two tieflings kind of walk up beside you. Uh, he is a bluish, uh, greenish. Uh, half work. He's uh, six foot five, uh, long black hair with the front parts of his hair being white, it's pulled back into a man bun with braids running along the sides of his head. The braids have beads and gold bangles in and along the braids, and the sides are shorter with longer hair on top. Um, very built, mostly uh, muscle. He has very structured jaw, hooded eyes with uh, amber eyes. 
he has tribal markings all over his face, mm -hmm. his hands, um, his shoulders. Um, his hands and his wrists are wrapped in essentially just very bloody and dirty bandages. <laughs> um, nice. And he has a bear claw scar over his uh, left eye, and he has two eyebrow piercings, oh. one on each eye, and then uh, tusks. He's in uh, scavenger clothes, so he's wrapped in scarves, very um, like a thicker kind of jacket, and then just uh, draped in a whole like travel merchant clothing. You're right, you are gonna with a he has his um his glaive out, but then he has two hand axes on his back. So um you would have arrived here the day before. Um you are in this place because well, for your own reasons. But this is First Light. Um, this is a small village known as Fimbleton. Um, and today is First Light, so it's a celebration. There's a lot of people in here. This is not something you're used to. You're used to seclusion and isolation. This is foreign to you. All of these people are around you. Some of them are bumping into you. It, it's loud, it's noisy, the air is stuffy. It is, all your sensors are firing at an 11 right now. Amazing. As you're in this place, um, in this tavern, what would you be doing exactly? As you are kind of sitting up at the bar, on like a bar stool, what would you be doing? You would be sitting at the very edge, <clears throat> not facing the door, but completely facing away, <laughs> with his knee propped up, legs very like wide set, trying to take up as much space as possibly can. He has a whetstone, mm -hmm. like right next to a leg, and he's like, fucking just sharpening his glaive and just dead stare at it. Just going at it. Okay. So that is what you guys would see as you approach the bar. Vibe check. It is... So everyone here, again, this is a, it's a farming village. Everyone here is dressed in very simple clothing. Mm -hmm. On today, people look pretty nice, but you would know that uh, m more so uh, people in villages tend to be kind of a little bit more dirty, a little bit more messy because they are working people. Are you okay? <laughs> My hand did. <laughs> it's fine. Um, on this day, though, people have dressed kind of in their best clothing. They've tidied up, you know, they've washed up. Um, everyone looks pretty decent today. Um, no one's really working. It is just a day of celebration. Uh, but as you two approach the bar, <laughs> this one is completely different from the rest. This is very out of place. And I, like, I jab Ambrose in the ribs, my elbow. I'm gonna switch to Infernal. What do you want me to do? See this guy? Look respectfully. Why does it have to be respectful though? Because I've been around you at least long enough to know how you look at people like that. Okay. Aside from the, uh, <gasps> um, maybe we could talk about the fact that he's sharpening a big fucking knife on the counter right now. <laughs> maybe. That's different. Small town, not a lot going on. I mean, well, the festival. I want you to know that this is a different language. Oh yeah, no, I know. That's <laughs> why he's you. just like. I mean, like yes, there's festivities and all that, like yippee. But um. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I've done this right at the beginning. <laughs> it's, it's the, and my mind is like, oh. Do you think he's gonna like the masses? Let's hope the fuck not. Should I ask him? I'm going to ask him. 
in common. <laughs> so, <laughs> excuse me. Mr. Uh, Green Gun. Hi. You gonna, um... You gonna what? murder what? some bitches or something? No. Are you just having fun? This is my hobby. What? Why, why do you think I'm just gonna... I mean, I could, if I really wanted to, but, uh, not, not right now. You gotta understand, Mikhail. Not everyone has hobbies like yours. That was so boring, though. No offense. I'm done. Bye! I was like, do you want me to point it out your throat instead and see where that gets you? I am so sorry about my companion. Would you like a drink? I could go for a drink. That'd be great. I mean, I was too <laughs> firm. Only if you're paying. I wouldn't offer unless I was otherwise. Well, some people are assholes, you know. I'm not one of them. He is. <laughs> I do. Uh, you, uh, you look pretentious, but uh, <clears throat> this one agrees. I mean, you're offering to buy me a drink, so I have absolutely no choice but to uh, be nice. Uh, so, uh, so what kind of drink? What type? Of, what is the strongest drink they have here? <clears throat> it, it's gonna be the equivalent of like a vodka. Works. Because oh. my brain is like, this one likes alcohol. Keep them as drunk as possible. <laughs> they have like basic beers, but if you're looking for hard liquor, mm. they do. They would have that. I'm just giving the shot. I'm gonna flag down the person. Hopefully he gets my attention. Get his attention. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll. Oh. Roll a persuasion check. Yeah. It's a 12. Oh! I forgot. I forgot what your. Correct. Your casters! Yep. Forgot about that part. Okay, yeah, so, uh, with a 12, you try to flag him down as he's doing, like, 20 things at once right now, um, but you, you catch him just as a moment, he's, like, turns around, you, like, flag him, and he just looks up and catches your hand, um, uh, you see him, like, trying to fill up, like, three different taverns full of, like, ale, and just looks up at you and goes, yes, can I help you? Can I get a shot of the strongest stuff you have in here? Like, For this guy. Behind him, I'm like... No, not for him. No, you don't fucking see me! <laughs> Behind you! <laughs> you can go ahead and roll sleight of hand. <laughs> Only a shot? <laughs> uh, that's like, oh, that's come like, on. You got... How uh, about, do you have a bottle? 19. <laughs> roll perception. <laughs> oh, shit! Nope. <laughs> 12. I go... I was like, oh, a whole bottle He, he looks at you me. and just, like, gives that's you a swift cute. nod. Um... You a bottle? Yes. Of like, course. Like. Uh, for this, uh, you, you said strong. Yes, please. That'd be a gold. Bye. It's quite expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and he just he like reaches for like a top shelf and he pulls down kind of like a uh, a narrow bottle that kind of like rounds out at the bottom. Uh, he uncorks it and just like puts it in front of you. Uh, the whole bottle is now yours. Oh, uh, he hands out so like nice. three like uh, tiny like Fuck. like like whiskey glasses. <laughs> and then you Fuck. see Ambrose just slide all three of them in front of Ornan. Ornan. All three sh- um, shot glasses. And I just grab the bottle. I'm like, oh, you're so nice. <laughs> As I was nice enough to give you a bottle, would you mind sharing why someone like you is in a place like this? It seems a bit <clears throat> unnatural. Why do we give a fuck? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> no, dude, you want to talk to strangers with big, sharp weapons? That's a good idea. <laughs> uh. Uh. Obviously, did not want to be here. Uh, it's quite obvious. A lot of people... Um, I'm just waiting for someone to, uh, come back. Fucking left me! But, uh, you know, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> wait, that, 
<laughs> this is the only thing we've been traveling together for two fucking years. Uh, together, and he just leaves, and then this is like, I'm a simpleton, and I'm like, okay. So, um, I've just been, uh, waiting here. It's like some it fucking dog. I guess. Sounds annoying. Yeah, he is quite annoying. When I first met him, I fucking dipped him in the face. How did that go? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you brought... You brought it up. No. <laughs> uh, would you like breakfast? Question. Mm. Why? Hold on. What was the what? Do you want breakfast? Yes, please. Anything, please. I'm going to wait a second before I. What was your question? Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. What? Why are you guys here? I don't. Why? I'm here for a job. Are you asking why we are companions or why we're here? Yes. I am here. So I am here to deliver something. And I am his best friend in the whole world. Can't go anywhere mm. without me. Best of friends. Love best friends. Guy. Love you. I'm feeling, uh, confliction? He's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, my niece tricked me into taking care of this one. Taking care of Taking care of actually. He's a troublemaker. I am a grown adult. I do not need to be taken care of, thank you. He's just saying jokes. And you think he's a grown adult? You are kind of short. Okay. <laughs> I have to pee, and I'm gonna start to walk to find the restroom. And you're gonna see Ambrose look at a watch. Hello, <laughs> someone. Stop that. So, a couple things happen. Mm -hmm. As you are walking to the, like, restroom. I am not, in fact, going to the restroom. Oh, but I know I'm gonna that. start walking to the restroom. <laughs> okay, as you do, um... One, you would immediately notice another person that's out of place. Um, you see... Um, actually, why don't you go ahead and describe your character to them? Yes. She is a five foot ten human woman with gray bobbed hair that fades from white to black down oh at the God, tips. We're besties. She's got a very... kind of... Uh, Kind of a cold demeanor, very sharp gray eyes. You know, beneath the mirror lies the sadness. Um, she has like like faded uh, greenish gear tattoos all over her body, and she's wearing very uh, like regal sorceress attire. What the fuck? Yeah, she's got. Uh, very sleek, elegant, but a very you know, attention-grabbing presence. Okay. She has Me too, really a, she, has a, <laughs> she has a big quarter staff with a bunch of steampunk working gear mechanisms. Oh! Okay. So you would immediately notice that they are out of place. They're kind of posted up in a corner, just kind of observing the room. Okay. You can go ahead and make me a, a perception check, please. While that's occurring, could I attempt to make an insight check to see if she'd give a fuck about what I'm doing? <laughs> I'd like to say Does that, that makes sense. I think without an insight check, you would know that they Just, would not, they are not really like looking at you. They are mostly observing you okay. as of right now. What, is that a perception? Right? Yes. 20. What pronouns for your character? Yeah, she, her. Okay. So, I wanted to make sure. <laughs> With a 20, you, you, your spidey senses start going off, if that makes sense. Alarm bells start ringing in your head. One, this person, as they walk by you, something about them, like, you feel this pull towards them. Kind of like as they move, your heart like skips a beat. Not like you're in love, more like this is important. 
Like, or it could be that you're in love. I mean, <laughs> not only that, but you sense something is about to happen. Ew. Like you need to be prepared. Oh. <laughs> that is all. What were you going to do? What I wanted to do is kind of like weave through the crowd and start looking for the bathroom. Um, and utterly any table that somebody's not paying attention, I just want a sip of someone's drink. <laughs> I don't want their whole drink. I just want to put it back. <laughs> and then make my way towards where the bathroom is, hang out in there for a minute, come back out. <laughs> Wonderful. Go ahead and make me a sleight of hand check. I just want a sip. I just want a fucking sip. The bottle yeah. is like a third of the way gone. <laughs> we'll get back to that. I love it. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> oh my god. Let's let's try to keep it down. Sorry, it's getting me. a little late. <laughs> it's like it's not five hours yet. <gasps> not but, yet. But we're trying. That's fine. <sighs> Did you roll a one? No, I rolled a I I got I have a plus four. I rolled a three. <laughs> Maybe we don't goddamn it. Okay. <laughs> so that's a seven in total. Wonderful. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not a third of the way, but like a few chugs. Yeah, a few chugs. That so, would be a as, you were, as you were going around, um, <laughs> as you were walking around, uh, searching like a predator searches for prey, you spot a tankard that is just resting on a table, prime for the picking. As you go for it, your hand grasps around it right as someone else's hand grasps yours. And they look down at you. This is a like taller, uh, bearded man with a scruffy, kind of like brown hair. Um, and he just, he, he, you see he has a smile on his face as he's looking away. He grabs it and immediately looks like down towards you and has oh. this expression of like confusion. Just, um, Sorry about. I thought that that was left on the tent. I didn't. Know. I'm so sorry. Were you? Were you trying was to? I, and he, this, at this point, he like turns around and gives you like his full attention. No, I, and he's I, I, he like squares up to you. No, I fully intended to take a sip, but only because I thought it was unattended. I didn't know that it belonged to anybody. He like. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Maybe don't do that. He, yeah. like, turns back around and, like, takes a sip in front of you and then, like, goes back to his conversation. Yep, sorry. Sorry about that one, Chief. And I start walking to the bathroom and just, it's the, oh god, with Gavin from Detroit Become Human, just, fuck. <laughs> go, go to the bathroom. And I'm just in there, like, do they have mirrors? Do, do... Do mirrors exist it, it, in your it, fantasy it, world? <laughs> yeah, they would have like a small mirror okay, above like the just... sink. Or a wash bin, whatever you call it. Splash water on my face. Wash my hands for fun. Leave. <laughs> okay. I come back in a very fucking sour mood. <laughs> you can go ahead and roll me a constitution check as you've just been chugging oh. down hard liquor apparently. You just see Ambrose just look at you like, oh goodness gracious, what have I done? <laughs> Try me, bitch. Alcohol <laughs> pieces. Don't say mean? try me and then count on your hands, you fucking lunatic. <laughs> 23! <laughs> Yo. Yo. Okay, so you're fine with a 20, but you know your you know like your limits. Yeah. But you're doing okay. <laughs> you're getting it just takes just one you're more. And then just yeah. Oh, I'm gonna save the rest of that for later. <laughs> Shoves it in his bag. Okay, so has a spare cork in his bag and plugs <laughs> it back up and shoves it. In his bag. Not even gonna question that. Okay. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. So, your senses <clears throat> are still going off. Uh, as you see the tiefling start like walking back from the bathroom, um, all of a sudden. The doors to the tavern burst open. <clears throat> Over the sound of everything, it's not that obvious that the doors burst open, but you, this is the first thing you notice as you're like, you're like an owl and scanning the room. The first thing you notice is 
the doors burst open and there's a young man um uh clean shaven brown hair uh burst open the doors he's just drenched in sweat you can see he has like a like a tan white shirt that is just drenched in sweat he is out of breath and um no one's really paying attention to him there's like a few people who like turn around but like everyone else is still just um in their own little like you know world um he begins to like step through and he's looking all over the room looks 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 and then he looks towards the bar and his eyes go wide and he just starts like mowing through people and trying to get through you can hear actually go uh, all of you can go ahead and make a perception at this point what the fuck guys just seven 16 you too yeah would be able to hear yeah he is yelling, he's yelling. He's just, Jeff, Jeff. <laughs> and he's just like trying to push people aside. And some people are actually like trying to push him back. So he's kind of get thrown around. This is like a mob, like a mob pit uh, or mosh pit, sorry. And he is kind of actually getting kind of roughed up as he's trying to make his way to Jaff, which now as you all, you two would see, that's the bar owner. Um, and he's trying to get to him. Is the bar owner like in front of us? Yes. Can we probably uh, move around? Would I pick up that he's noticing something? Not with that Not perception with check. Uh, 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 Jeff? Jeff? Yes, what is um, it? I think there is uh, someone looking for you. He, he like, he's like in the crowd like screaming your name like crazy he cranes his neck up and like scans the crowd and he can see uh, the person uh, like running towards him and like now they make eye contact and this dude's face yeah. is like of terror right now um, and he, he looks down and he goes what uh, Santana are you are you alright um he looks for the people um, right behind you guys, and they kind of like look towards him and look towards um, now you know as Santana, uh, who is running. And Java's like, uh, m "Please, can you make way for him?" And people actually start like moving, and he runs up and like slams into the bar, just, <laughs> and he, <sighs> Jeff. And Jeff looks at me, he's like, oh, it's all right, calm down, what's going on? Take a deep breath. He looks up and goes, the field, they're back. There's still people in there, we need, we need your help. And Jeff goes, oh, not this shit again. He turns back around and you see him like kick the wall and like a little panel goes, and you see that there's like a long sword that comes out of this like Fuck secret yeah. panel <laughs> and he grabs it and like turns towards him. He goes, all right, lead me to them. And uh, he begins to walk. And as he like flips open, like the counter to uh, get out, you see that he has a peg leg. And as he begins to walk, you see that he, this dude's old. This dude's really yeah. old. So as he like begins to walk out into the crowd, um, you see he's already out of breath. Oh. And he is straining to walk. Mm, that sucks. But he is he is going to follow this guy. Mm. I'm gonna... Can I... Are they gonna walk past us? So you are sitting at the edge, so you you are like... Here's the counter that flips open, you're like right there. So yeah. Grab his arm. He just like looks at you and goes... I'm Listen, kind of busy right now. I also... <laughs> I need to blow off some steam. Do you want some help? I, uh, I would not say no to help. Not to be, not to Amazing. be great. Amazing. I pat him on the shoulder and I stand yeah. up. You can actually see him like wince at that. And mm, okay, go ahead and make a strength check for me. Actually. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get <thank> God. <laughs> Nine. Okay, so okay. you see him like wince at that. Um, but that's about it. You, it, it. It physically kind of like hurt him a bit. Um, but as they begin to walk, um, you see that Jaff is physically straining himself to match Santana's pace. Have fun. Um, as they as they reach the door, um, Jaff like grabs onto a post and begins to like 
like slide down like he kneels to the floor and just like he is out of breath and Santana goes oh Jav I hate to ask you to do this but we need to go now and hey. Jav goes right I just give me a moment and then ja- uh, Santana looks back up and scans the crowd who now it's almost gone completely silent as they're all looking towards Jav who um I don't, you wouldn't even have to roll an insight check for this. Um, they're all worried about him now, and seeing this, they know that, like, oh god, something's happening. We can't do anything. We're all waiting for Jaff to do something. So Santana looks up and just kind of scans the room and goes, We need help at the fields. Anyone, please. I'm coming along. I have a job to do. Did I hear you mocking this guy on your book? Take your time, Jeff. You at all mocking this guy. And Jeff, like, looks at him and just kind of nods. He's gonna fetch him. You're gonna go help. Jeff, what? you don't. You stay here. Thank you. You, you are not fit to fight. Obviously, that. I, 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 no offense, but. He just raises his hand and goes, none taken. I mean. The <laughs> Santana looks to both of you and goes, Thank you. We need to hurry. Right. I'm also going to kind of drag this one along with me. of Because this one was mocking. No, listen, I'm trying to enjoy the festivities, <laughs> honestly. It's been You're great. helping. I, why? Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's go. And I just, I just walk out. <laughs> and I'm like, where? Where are we going? <laughs> so, as you all exit... <laughs> Woodcutter's Folly, you begin to follow Santana towards the large fields, kind of uh, east, northeast-ish, oh, southeast-ish from where you are, um, to the fields. As you exit, there's not a lot of uh, celebration sounds now, but you do hear screaming coming in the, uh, from the distance. You all head towards the fields of wheat. And that is where we're going to end this session. Motherfucker! We'll pick up next time with you encountering whatever is coming from the fields. Goddamn. Oh. Your map no! is going to get you in trouble. No! What do you think of our new adventurers, hmm? I suppose this was only a mere introduction, but these are the ones we will be following throughout our story. Next week, we will get to see our adventurers test their mettle in a skirmish against a... Oops. Spoilers. Well, I do hope you enjoyed the brief introduction to our characters. Come back soon. We have so much more to show you. I suppose if you can't wait that long, you can join our Discord. There you can talk to our dear adventurers, explore the ever-expanding lore of Ethos, and be a part of our lovely community. Thank you again for listening, and goodbye for now.